My name is Rebecca Longbine. I am doing my revisual riffing project over Lucille Tanazas, who's an American graphic designer and educator. I will give a brief summary of her life and explain why her communication designs have broken the communication boundaries in a way that is structurally sound, yet lyrically tolerant. Born on December 17, 1953 in the Philippines, she was raised in the city of Manila with a population of 1.78 million people. Winning national painting contests as a child, her interest and love for design grew. She describes herself as a cultural nomad. Lucille was raised in a culture where the Tagalog language was reserved for the communication between family and friends, and English was used for education and professionalism. This was where her unique relationship to language was formed. Her approach to merging the two languages seemed out of date, but her desire to conquer and appropriate the English language is what has acted as the platform for her work. It is what will make her topography and graphic design so appealing to generations and where her type and form work together in harmony. She graduated with the bachelor's from the College of the Holy Spirit of Manila with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and in the mid-1970s, an aunt in Michigan paid her tuition in the U.S. to continue her postgraduate degree. In 1979 in Michigan, during December, she went to Cranbrook Academy of Art and gave Catherine, Catherine McCoy her profile. Tenazis was accepted by McCoy as a mid-year transfer student, receiving an MFA in 2D design. In 1985, she accepted a faculty position at the California College of Arts and Crafts, founded the design MFA program there, and founded her practice, Tenazis Design, in San Francisco. She was the president of the American Institute of Graphics, Graphic Arts, otherly known as AIGA. She was also the first to be based out of New York alone. She returned to the city. She originally began her practice in 1982 and moved back to New York in 2006 with her husband, Richard Barnes, and their two children. Tenazas Design Company was based in San Francisco for 20 years and was finally relocated with her to New York in 2006. She is with she is the Henry Wolf Professor and Associate Dean of the School of Art, Media and Technology or AMT at the Parsons School of Design currently. Regarding Lester's nine elements of pre-analysis of applying at least three of his perspectives relative to the following works over the next several slides, we will break down the small details that comprise such strong works of communication design and what made Lucille Tenazas both an interactive educator and inspiring graphic designer. We'll be breaking down this thought piece into three components by visual cues, purpose of the work, image aesthetic, and we'll come to an understanding as to the nature of the piece as well as the intended absorption from the mind of our communications designer to the absorber themselves. October 2012, this thematic logo design and print web announcement was submitted for a symposium held at the MFA Interior Design Program. The purpose of her work here was a meditation on the concept of the interior environment. This piece is representative of her environmental purpose to create a body of work that was both a result of her surroundings and an interpretation of her past. She achieves image aesthetics from her lifelong interaction with language itself. She created this design to express type and images in a re-evaluation on the importance of simplicity in modernist graphic design. Her visual cues with natural lining and stark contrasting in the environment itself created the structural lines for eye movement, but her use of light and natural coloring, we not only can identify the components of the piece that are in contrast, but the interest in this is created for the entire type, with the image being the soother. Her ability to use only a few colors in her executions exemplify her continuous brilliance in allowing the absorber the ability to take in mass information in an interesting and enlightening way, as well as not being overwhelming. By absorbing both the East and West Coast disciplines in the U.S., and upon interpreting them as she saw fit, the essence of her work itself is unique and very powerful. 
She explains her communication design as quote unquote base level and that quote people respond to other people's problems. You have to find the ability to move from one context discipline culture to another and be seen as one of them so that trust is stimulated and that allows the designer to speak in their client's voice without having to sacrifice their own, unquote. So for my riff off, I decided to enact that I was part of the Tanazas design team myself in New York and we're representing a nonprofit group called Love 146. They deal in ending child trafficking issues and aim to create continual awareness of, the, of this issue. On this slide, you'll see their logo as well as a sample from their mass media campaign. This will be my client and they want me to create a new campaign piece for their mass media distribution. As you can see, there are two examples of Lucille Tanazas' designs. And in the middle is my version and my riff off from all of the accumulations of her designs. By understanding the problems and the needs of Love 146, I chose to create this piece for them. Breaking down this piece, we can see the purpose of the work here is to create awareness on the concept of evil within our society, evolving innocence itself. Achieving image aesthetics by the use of Lucille's Tenaz Lucille Tenazas' interpretation of language and images, the use of the images are in three colors, corresponding to the use of the type colors. The use of structure with text design creates an illusion of clutter at first glance, but upon reading from the largest font at the top, the lines from the image draw your eye downward into the details of communication. By the use of symbolic pieces, such as child in white that has been distorted and marked onto the overwhelming man in red behind her, appearing to have the child sitting in his lap, and the blue neon lit background suggesting an underground nightlife. Our points of influence to the absorber are met, as well as the necessity of the re reception of the message from Love 146. In the type you see the word open, and from the E downward you read the word evolve, with the last two letters V and E slightly to the right. This is important in that if the message from the I is read, the L is read bottom to top, you can read the word love, thus reiterating the facts that the message as well as the first part of the company's logo to incorporate top of mind is there. When you have a, constru a structured format of end child trafficking, as you see on your left, the typeface interchanges between the first letter and the rest of the word in that it is supposed to be interpreted as the style that you would see in a, ch in a child's fairy tale book. The numbers represented in the rest of the company's logo are set one on front of the child and two in front of the red silhouetted man. For the person passing by at a quick glance, it creates intrigue into the colors of the man and the marked out child along with the numbers to inherently look like ages. Such an age difference and such a negative color combination creates the interest in the piece to stop and observe the executional meaning. In conclusion, Lucille Tanazas is an educator, creator, writer, and inspiration to all communications design entrepreneurs. She has made a mark on humanity dialectally different from anything we have seen in a very long time. I was personally inspired by researching and understanding how she uses communication design.